everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we chose our RV. This is going to be part of our one year on the road video series. After one year, we finally feel like we have enough experience and maybe a little bit of authority to say something on the matter. So if you're going to live full time on the road, you really only have three major types. You have motor homes, you have fifth wheels, and you have travel trailers. Unless, of course, you count some of the weird things like the Unimogs or the uh, semi-convergence or something like that. But we're going to specifically be talking about the pros and cons between motorhomes, travel trailers, or fifth wheels. And when we talk about a motorhome, we're talking about something that is the vehicle is where you also live. Um, and then a fifth wheel, similar to a travel trailer, is pulled behind the rig, but it has that section that sticks up over the bed of the truck and then the travel trailer being the bumper pull option where you don't have any of that overhang. It's just connected there at the bumper. So we chose a fifth wheel to live in and tow on the road. We chose the fifth wheel because we liked the size. We wanted something bigger to live in. Uh, we also liked the idea of having a truck. Well, I think the number one thing that we first chose, we, we first thought about and decided on, we wanted a tow behind was was safety. Um, the class A motorhomes are, they're, they're, they're safe in that they're huge and that gives you some, some safety, but at the same time, they're not very safe because they have hardly any safety when you're driving in them at all, just seat belts. They hardly even have airbags, even today. Um, so we really like the idea of having a big truck uh, to have all the the side impact airbags, the front airbags, the good restraints, etc. And although if we got in an accident towing the fifth wheel, probably wouldn't be a pretty sight. But we're still our, our primary vehicle is a big heavy duty truck that has all the modern safety features. So that was kind of a big thing for us and there, a lot of the reason that we wanted to at least have a tow behind vehicle. We also like the fifth wheel because it allowed for a lot of space. Over the travel trailer, you get that extra space over the uh, bed of the truck. Which also makes it kind of shorter. Like you, the travel yeah. trailer is extended behind the truck, whereas the fifth wheel is a little bit shorter because some of it hangs over the truck. Yeah, kind so of nice. ours is a 33 foot, well, four or five feet of that hangs over the um, the bed of the truck, so we're actually not as long as it would be if we had a 33-foot travel trailer. That's true. Also, fifth wheels give you a lot of more uh, flexibility in turning, because you can completely jackknife the truck. You can actually go more than 90 degrees and push and do different things with the truck, so you can usually get them in a little bit tighter spots and situations. Mm -hmm. They also tow a lot better in general. A lot of the weight of the fifth wheel is in the bed of the truck right over the rear wheels, so they're inherently very stable on the road compared to a travel trailer that requires sway control. Not that they're not they're not um, s safe on the road. With, with good sway control, you can tow a, a large travel trailer safely, but you have to hook up the, the sway control every time, and it, we just didn't really want to deal with that. Yeah, so over the travel trailer, the fifth wheel was a pretty easy choice for us, but we did go back and forth between the motorhome and the fifth wheel, despite the safety reasons, because it is really convenient to be driving down the road and be able to get up and make yourself a snack while you're going down the road. You have everything attached right behind you. There are also times where we're driving around a town in our big old truck, which is our commuter vehicle, and we've always fantasized, well, wouldn't it be nice if we had this little smart car that we could have just towed behind a motorhome? So we, we are a little jealous about those things that you get with a with a Class A or other type of motorhome. However, it is nice to have the giant truck sometimes to be able to haul whatever we want, and yes. uh, I always have tools with me in the truck, like a lot of tools, yes. so that's, that's a really nice thing. I also feel like the fifth wheels give you a lot of different layout options. I when you have a motorhome, you know, you have your cab in your living space, and you know, they're very comfortable and it's nice having that big window, but uh, it's just- Beautiful view out the front a lot of them we've been in. You have a lot more options for layouts in a fifth wheel. I think, yeah, the fifth wheels are definitely the most homey of all of them just because of the layout options and mm -hmm. they tend to have the most space. Actually, the um, the our International RV Association limits the size of motorhomes could can legally be and have their 
certificate. And I believe in a motorhome, it's 400 square feet of living space. In a fifth wheel, it actually allows for 430 square feet. So you can actually have more living space in a fifth wheel legally than in a motorhome. I think 30 square feet is cutting hairs there. That's you know? true. But nonetheless, the floor, <laughs> you usually get more floor space in a, a fifth wheel over, over a motorhome. The motorhomes are really nice, however, because if you go with a large diesel, at least, you get a lot of weight carrying capacity. And when you're full time on the road, how much you can carry is very important. Huge. When you start looking at trailers and, and uh, fifth wheels, a lot of times you'll see that they only can carry like 2,000 pounds of cargo. And that's like, that's like nothing. That's, that's like your water weight. Yeah, water weighs a lot. So, so that was a lot of the reason we chose yes. our rig because it had about 5,000 pounds of cargo carrying capacity and that is really important to us so we can carry a lot but a lot of those motorhomes have like 20,000 pounds in cargo carrying capacity so you can put whatever the heck you put want whatever in you want in and there. be safe <laughs> on the road so that we're also kind of jealous about it's nice to have that in those massive powerful rigs but then again you can run into the same thing in a motorhome uh, the small motorhomes that have the 20 22, 20,000 pound chassis or under, a lot of times they're very limited on their weight as well. So you gotta be careful with the motorhome mm -hmm. uh, sometimes as well. I'm talking about the big diesels that are, the, yeah. I consider them unlimited. You take whatever you want. Regardless, if you're thinking about going full time on the road, it really comes down to what you're gonna be wanting to do and what your lifestyle is currently. If you're not used to driving a big dually diesel truck you've been driving a little sports car around, you're probably not gonna like using the big truck as your commuter vehicle day in and day out. I think that's great advice. Probably take a look at what you've got in your garage and, and see, um, do you have little sports cars currently? Then you're probably gonna rather drive your big motor home occasionally and tow your little sports car. So you're comfortable with that. Yeah. If you already drive trucks and such, maybe you should big be SUVs. really considering a, a, a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. Yeah. We have two dogs. If you have dogs, kids, anything like that, you're, you're gonna wanna think about what your tow vehicle would be or if a big um, towing vehicle would be better suited to your lifestyle. Also, just if you're thinking about the size of your living space, you know, when we were going from a house to a RV to live in full time, we thought, oh my gosh, we need to get the biggest thing out there and so that we can fit in and live in comfortably. But you, know, when you get into it, you really realize that you can live very comfortably in a very small space. So, as long as it's efficiently designed. Yes, so go to a lot of RV shows, go tour rigs, as many as you can, you'll really start to figure out what you like, what you see yourself living in and how you would wanna live in an RV. We we went to a lot of RV shows and went through a lot of RVs to solidify what we wanted to do. We, we looked at motorhomes and fifth wheels and travel trailers and this was what kind of fit us, what felt right to us. Yeah, it's really gonna depend on, on, on your needs. I mean, if you want to have Toys, either a fifth wheel with a, a toy box, a, a garage is probably a good option, or maybe the travel trailer, and you can throw throw a, an ATV in the back of your truck. Um, so you know that's that's kind of a, a good option there. You can get toy hauler motorhomes, but they're really kind of limited in, in space a lot of times. Another reason that we like the fifth wheel is that we get pretty good fuel economy with it. It's probably a, a middle of the road option. Travel trailers because uh, they're really low, they're shorter than most. Fifth Fifth wheels tend to do pretty well on fuel because you're not pushing a giant mass through the air like the front of our, our rig. However, we chose a diesel truck and although we're about 24, 25,000 pounds truck and trailer on the road, we still average about 11, 12, 13 miles per gallon depending on what we're doing. And, and for that much weight, we consider that really, really good. I mean, come on Prius, like weight per miles per gallon, we're actually doing a lot better than the Prius. So that's kind of a, a fun way to think about it. And then when we are detached from our fifth wheel, our truck, since it's a diesel, does do pretty well around town, getting somewhere around 19, 20, sometimes even more than 20, mm -hmm. depending on where we're driving. 
So it has turned out to be really economical for us on the gas mileage side of things. If you're driving a really big Class A, especially a gas one, I mean, you're going to be talking like seven, eight, maybe nine miles per gallon. And then if you tow, if you tow something that doesn't get great gas mileage behind it, your overall gas mileage is going to be a lot worse. So, yeah. uh, but if you're towing like a like a Prius or a smart car, you 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 probably recoup quite a bit of that. But that is something to consider as well as your gas mileage. Cost was also a big thing for us. The the ultimate oh, yes. cost of the rig. Um, we we wanted we had a price range that we were looking in, and um, we figured we could get the most bang for the buck with a fifth wheel and a truck. Um, Motorhomes you could buy something used, but they're still very expensive, and then. Uh, sometimes they underpower them and we just weren't comfortable with buying a used uh, motor home. Used as in, you know, our rig right now is 10 years old. If you're looking at, you know, 10 year old rigs, motor homes, you, you start wondering how well it's been taken care of and things like that. You, the engine. Yeah, and the you've got, that's a, that's a drawback in my, my mind of a motor home is that the, the engine and the drivetrain is all part of your house. If you break down, your house has to be serviced. If our truck needs service, we just we just detach and take it to the shop, or we take it to the shop and detach there. So I mean that, that's been that's been kind of kind of convenient. We found a good a good newer truck and an older RV in really good condition, and and feel like it's been a very cost effective uh, cost effective means to get into it to purchase a rig. And besides feeling like we're a little too big for some of the places that we want to go. Um, at 33 feet, you know, which might surprise some of you that that feels small or that feels big. Um, we have been very comfortable in this and uh, we really hesitate. We, we, we dream about it, but we really hesitate in changing it up because we have our, our flow down. We have our lifestyle down pretty comfortably right now. I think rig selection also depends on uh, on how much you want to go off grid or mm -hmm. what what you want to do with it. Do you want to go to an yes. RV park and hook up and use their utilities, or do you want to go off grid? We have a hundred gallons of fresh water, which is a decent amount, and uh, to us, having a lot of water was a, an important thing because we like to go off grid for like a month at a time. We're mm -hmm. off grid right now at the beautiful Hungry Horse Reservoir behind us here, and um, we haven't been hooked up for probably almost a month now. So it's <laughs> it's been you know we like. We like doing this, so this is it was important to us to have um, uh, a lot of battery, a lot of water, uh, and gray and black tanks. Yeah, and and a lot of space in your tank yes. so that you can you can stay uh, off grid for longer periods of time. Motorhome, fifth wheel travel trailer. It really depends on your needs. We've we know people full timing in all the different different types, and yes. they all make it work, and they all love their setup for one reason or another. And our our needs may change down the road and we may change to a different type of rig. But uh, for right now, for our lifestyle, the fifth wheel is definitely our favorite rig uh, on the road. So. Have we covered it? I think that pretty much covers it. If you guys have any other questions about how we, or how or why we chose our rig, you can leave them below um, and we'll try to answer them in either a future blog or a video. Um, or just answer them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.